Thank you for tuning in to another episode of a Business Minute. I'm your host, Sir, and today I'm joined with a special guest, Miss K. Marie. How are you? I'm well, well. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you awesome. for awesome. Thank you for joining me today on a little bit of short notice, but you hey, you here? I really appreciate it. So, K. Marie, you you wear a couple of hats. I do, just a few. Uh, you know, <laughs> so if if you don't mind, to the listeners, could you tell us what you do? Um, I am a photographer. Um, of K. Marie Photography. I am also a spoken word artist, a poet for y'all, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> old school folks. <laughs> <laughs> um, with uh, Black on Black Rhyme, Step to the Mic, that's Mobile's chapter, Mic Check. Um, and technically, I'm also an It Works ambassador, but uh, <laughs> I'm on a little hiatus. But if you need raps, I always got them. All so, right. Yeah. Hey. Those are the ones I claim at the moment. So I wanted to ask specifically in, in both in poetry and in uh, in photography, uh, how long have you been active? Um, so for photography, I've been active since 2007. I was young, um, looking for a job. I happened to come across like Indeed, I want to say, uh -huh. and uh, Serious Portrait was hiring. So I was like, I need to, I need to try this. You know, I know, I know, I'm not certified in this, but let me just try. And when I went in, uh, you're supposed to be able to shoot five stars, and I was shooting four. So the manager was like, Look, you you need to stay here. This is what you're meant to do. So ever <laughs> since that point, you know, I knew it was already in me. Um, I stayed there for about four years. Uh, they certified me or whatever and taught me what I needed to know, but they had so many rules and I felt like I was so boxed in. There was no room for advancement or promotion. And I felt like I was giving so much of me to them that I could be giving that much of me to me. Exactly. So that's when I went ahead and invested in myself and got my first camera. I don't even want to think about how those sessions looked, but now <laughs> <laughs> I'm a much, a much better person. So that's good. Um, for poetry, I've been writing all my life. I wrote like my first little nursery rhyme in first grade, uh, uh -huh. a short story in um, fourth grade. My teacher published it in a little paper or whatever. Uh, I wrote a novel in fifth grade, and then I got to Florida, Fort Walton Beach, Panhandle, whoop, whoop, 850, okay then. Oh, right but I got to Florida, and the teacher told me that I couldn't write. Okay. Now, mind you, I was in Birmingham before I got to Florida, so you know I was around my own kind. Okay. Uh, the, my ancestry is in Birmingham, mm -hmm. so I was around my people. So then I got to sixth grade, and they told me, oh, oh, you can't write. They have this Florida rights test that you have to pass in order to graduate as a high school senior. Well, okay. in middle school, it's called the Florida Kitty. And so they want you to, to prepare you for going and taking that test, which before I graduated middle school, you had to take to get out of eighth grade to go to high school as well. Wow. Which was that uh, the... Florida Rights and the FCAT, which is the standardized test. So um, we were doing mock writing topics, and then she told me I couldn't write. Now, I felt like I was somebody, you know, this young. I got published, and then my mom was trying to get my little novel published or whatever. Unfortunately, when we in the move, all of that stuff got dismissed, so oh, I don't even have man. any any of that. But um, the experience was worth it. But she was trying to get me published, and then... This woman, I won't say her name, but I'll never forget it, <laughs> told me that I could not write. So that kind of propelled me forward to prove her wrong. So I um, kept writing. I was trying to write novels and whatnot. And then my brother was into rap or whatever, and he needed me to write female parts for the rap. So I was like, okay, I can do this. All right, I can, I can write a couple of these. That's cool. Does that sound cool? All right, I'm in there. <laughs> and... Um, I came across Sonny Patterson on a on a YouTube video, and I was like, no, I want to do that. That, I want to touch people like that. And by eighth grade, I was writing poems, but the, I didn't feel like they were spoken word poems. I was writing poetry, you know, like uh, scenery type stuff. The, the wind blows, the trees are in the wind, when it blows, you know, that type of <laughs> <laughs> nursery rhyme type. <laughs> type of stuff um, and then I got to high school and I saw a couple of more people like um, uh, be strong and uh, be young and um, Mo West and, and people mm. like those I started seeing you know development 
developed poetry that was touching people and shaking people. And when I like came into contact with Team Snow, the original Team Snow, um, <laughs> I, I just knew that that's what I wanted to do. That's how I wanted to touch people. I want to spit like that. That's, that's what I want. And once I tried it on, it fit so well that I didn't want to take it off. Great. So I hope that answers your question. I know it takes me a long time to get to the point. It's a sad no, 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 no. Give no, me. No, <laughs> no, no. no. And, and like I said, this this is your story. That's the purpose of me picking. Indeed, I appreciate and, it. Um, like I said, uh, and, and those of you who listen to the podcast probably remember, Kay Marie was on our podcast before. All right. And um, <laughs> not only graced us with her comedy, but uh, she left us with a piece before and feedback was overwhelming like i kind of undersold it when i told you earlier oh. but like people want it more like oh thank now. you thank you thank you so thank you. y'all keep me humble <laughs> y'all make me i understand yeah. that that right there because yeah. this yeah. does that for me yeah. um so I, I know that like gratification I'm doing purpose to do yeah exactly. exactly that gratification i putting it into words as much as i love words that's the hardest thing to do mm-hmm. you know talking about me and putting my gratitude into words i don't know what I'm gonna do for those, but I gotta figure something out. Hey, <laughs> just keep doing what you're doing. That's yes, that's the I best thing you can. You. Thank do. you, thank you, thank you. So, and you, you really answered my next question about what inspired you to start from there. So, oh well, yeah. And then along the way, I've been a part of. Uh, now I'm not a, a, a poetry trip or anything. Don't feel like that. I just feel <laughs> like every opportunity that you have, you should take advantage of it. You yeah. know, every situation that you're placed in is going to help build you to be the better version of you. And I'm always preaching up about being the best version of yourself. So with Speak to Me Poetry, which is the pride and the joy, that's the one. That was the uh, emerge of singers and poets. And like, if you like poetry, that was the type of vibe. Bill Street mm. Water Club is no longer there, but we used to rock out. You hear me? But um, that's the one. But everyone, everyone's adulting. You know, and so everyone's all over the place. We had military people, people that our singers are real singers. You know, they're they're out there, you know, propelling themselves so that they can get out there and make it. And I'm all for it, all love for them. So please go out and support them. When y'all drop my information at the end, then y'all will know how y'all can get in touch with these people as well because they're wonderful. You know what I'm saying? They are very talented people in all of the fields that they're in. Coming off of a high and hot question like that, I have to reflect it because, you know, everybody has been down before so like on your journey you know you mentioned like the teacher that said you couldn't write and um you know working in a position where you felt like you know it wasn't going anywhere were there any other obstacles along the way that you know you're gonna have obstacles all the time Mm -hmm. when you write a poem and you get up there and somebody is like laughing or (laughs) gets up and walks out or is looking at their phone uh, like and the, it could be innocent if they're looking at their phone, but you just feel like you don't have their attention. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Which it could be completely obli- oblivious. Like I can uh, multitask. Like I was talking to you earlier. I was yep. like, hey, I'm looking at my phone, but I want you to know that I'm listening because if I look into your eyes and I stare at you for too long, I zone out. I start thinking about other <laughs> stuff. So <laughs> you don't want. If I'm staring at you, I don't hear anything you said. You can ask my best friend. I <laughs> I used to get on her nerves that like you ain't even hear me, did you? Mm-mm. Mm-mm, sure didn't. <laughs> nothing, nothing that you said. But um, actually, my mother, she never believed that I should be a poet. When I told, when she asked me what I wanted to be, now as a child I said a nurse because she was a CNA and she was studying to be a nurse. That's a story in itself. But um, and so I wanted to be like her. I was influenced, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and then I started doing looking into other little you know things that sounded good or they made a lot of money but when I actually sat and thought about it I just wanted to write and I told her that and she was like "Mm, you should probably do something more realistic you should probably do something that's you know that's that's worth something I don't think that that's that's not good enough for you to do you know what I'm saying so I was like "Mm, that's tough so this was after the English teacher you know when I actually came to terms with what I wanted to do I was like 19 at this point Mm -hmm. and this is when I was really looking at those spoken word videos that I was saying before um, so that I could see what it was that that fit so well for me and that's when I started merging into that and around the time that I hit my first open mic prior to Speak To Me Poetry, that Speak To Me Poetry was a result of the open mic that I hit in the long run. So 
that like I said earlier everything you know that you do is going to help you become a better version of you so had I not stepped out on that limb after the person that was so important to me told me that what I wanted to do wasn't realistic enough you know what I'm saying I would have still been struggling to go to work on Monday or <laughs> so happy for Friday because the work week has been so draining to me I wouldn't be doing anything that I love to do now so that's that's the obstacle in itself. Now now my mother, <laughs> she's fine with. She understood after she saw me do what I do. She yeah. understood why I was doing what I was doing, and so that was rewarding. Yeah, and I, that I, obstacle in that sense. I completely understand that. And uh, when you uh, walk into my house, I don't know if you noticed. There's a sign that says uh, "Do what you love" or "Do what you dream" or something like yeah. to that effect. And that was given to me by my mom. Yeah. And I, I totally understand wanting. The people you care about most to really approve be a vehicle yeah. behind of what you're doing, like you, gratification, man. man. That's, that's that's what it's what about. It is. And uh, honestly, and I started this podcasting just this past February, and oh, it's growing that. faster than I could imagine. And I completely understand. I, I give it to her. I'm like, you the one who told me to do it because I told it to her first. Like, yeah. well, I want to do a podcast. She was like, well, do it. Yeah. And and she was like, why haven't you started? I was like, uh. I don't know. No <laughs> excuse. Right. So, uh, none. No excuse. So I, I completely understand. And when it, it does make you a little proud when I put an episode out and I see that she liked it or reposted it somewhere. Right. You know, because I'm making her proud as right. well and doing what I like. So That's how I feel. I respect that. I respect with, that. With poetry and seeing my work. Like when yeah. people put my work as their profile page, I'm like, all right. I see that KM in that photography. I'm like, all right, that's me. I took that. All right. <laughs> And or I see someone share it or put the hearts on there, a comment that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. K. Marie, I love your work. I mean, I don't need <laughs> I don't need the hype. You know what I'm saying? It's just the fact that you took the time out to do those little things and let exactly. me know that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. That is what is that's what keeps you going. You know? That's what propels you to keep on going. I, I wholeheartedly agree. All right. So let me ask. In the in the in the years you've been doing both okay. wearing both hats. Which experience would you find to be the most memorable? Now, I wouldn't be mad if you have to take a moment to think about that. All right, then. Because that's a few years now. I know. <laughs> I feel old now. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say for photography. So when I started doing the Love Yourself campaign, mm. um, people that don't know me or know the person that I started shooting for it just feel like we take new pictures or I take picture which I take all pictures by the way let me clarify that but I also do the love yourself campaigns which involve you having no inhibitions everything that you brought into that room you have to drop it at the door so all of your doubt your anger your your flaws that you feel like you have if you got stretch marks and you hate them you don't hate them after you walk through this door there there's something that you love about you they're a part of your body there's something that you've been through and that you've made it through you yeah. know what i'm saying so um if you if you're heartbroken if you people have cried for these sessions you know and and then i shot them and they were the most beautiful pictures i've ever seen so the first person that was shot was Kara butter so fly from Power lines. Oh, Shout wow. out to her. But um, she was going through a difficult time in her life, and uh, it was similar to my time. I might tear up a little bit. <laughs> it's okay. It was similar to my time that I had gone through, so that one was probably the most important session that I've done because through her, I dropped my inhibitions. Mm -hmm. As I saw her evolve, Okay, take a moment. Take a moment. It's all right. As I saw her evolve in her situation, which was so similar to my situation, it helped me evolve out of my own situation that I didn't even realize that I was in. Mm -hmm. So I still had dark clouds over me, and I didn't know until I saw myself in Cara's eyes. So the first night that she had brought us over and confessed what was going on with her, I just went and I laid on her lap as the empath that I am, and I just let her, her get it out. So I cried for her. 
So every time she started uh, tearing up, you know, I, I touched her and I, I cried her tears for her because that's how close I was to what she was going through. Mm -hmm. So when she was like, hey, I just need to take some pictures. I just need to, I just need to let it all go and let it all out. And I picked up that camera to shoot her. She is literally butter so fly because she was some cocooned and boxed up little caterpillar. But after that session and she saw herself, how we see her, mm. that changed her whole outlook. Mm. And Cara has been, excuse my language, a okay, ever since then. <laughs> <laughs> and I would shoot her all day, every day. So every time, every session is a new milestone in her life. So when you see them, don't think that it's, it's trying to be risque or trying to put her out there. It's just letting you know, hey, I just I just dropped something at the door and I just overcame something. Look at me. That's so beautiful. that's what the Love Yourself campaign is about, and that's why it's so important, especially that little car one. Okay, sorry. Let me no, stop don't you apologize. Talk. Let me no, stop no, no. Listen, you talk. It's, it's okay. I take a moment. Hey, I got <laughs> you. No, that that that, and I did go through and look at some of your work there, and it's risque, but it's not uh unclassy it's it's very flattering it's it's an art to how you do it you know and i i i i that's definitely a line between pornography right and what you're doing you what you're doing is art i've seen it and uh once we get done i challenge each one of you who feel that i may be underselling it or may not know the difference to go on her page and look at what we're talking about it's some fine and it takes courage to do that, to right. look at yourself uh, objectively right. and to love yourself and love the reflection that you give exactly. and leave all of your doubt at the door. That's powerful. That takes a lot of faith and a lot of strength to do. So I commend you on that Thank because you. You. that's something all of us have right. or have had right. and some to some degree more than others. And that goes into a topic that I've been doing before on mental health. You have to love yeah. yourself. Right. First. Unconditionally. First. Exactly, and that's important. Taking that step to see yourself and love who you are is important. So you providing that to someone is, you can't even put a price on that. Right. <laughs> I can't. don't. <laughs> well, those predict love yourself, if it's for the campaign, I don't. See? See? And, and now, we I didn't do even boudoir play. shoots, but every shoot is <laughs> not a love yourself session, exactly. is what I'm saying. Exactly. But exactly. those sessions, I don't charge for. Yeah, and because that's they're they're more than what I can't emotional put a price on value. Yes. Exactly. 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 Yeah. How do I put a price on giving you your life back? Yeah. Or changing or, your or, life or, giving or propelling you forward. Like that you that see cocoon. yourself in a exactly in a whole different light. Like, Unless you go about your life like you intended. You know, I was listening right. to someone else on a podcast. Yeah. And I guess the, the 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 catchphrase right now because of the popular song is living my best life. Right. And people are singing it but not really getting what he's saying. I'm not worried about anything else. I'm doing it to to have the courage to do you right, regardless. That's the key word. Regardless, it's very tough to do nowadays because right. we're in an age of looking like everybody else, Opinions. doing what everybody yeah. else do, and exactly and social and media. And, yeah, it's 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 very. I feel like it's more powerful now than it was. A few years back you know now that the power of social media connects everybody to stand out amidst all the hatred and, yeah. and the naysayers and the trolls and stuff and say this is me I love me right I have a poem that I'm working on that um, basically starts out saying I used to try to sound like other people mm. And uh, I'm not, that's all I'm gonna say because I'm like, like I said, I'm working on it. But I'll drop the next show date and maybe, <laughs> maybe it'll be complete. Y'all can come hear the poem. <laughs> but um, I, I just tried so hard to sound like this person because they were getting snaps. To sound like this person because somebody was like, ooh, mmm. You know, we like to hear that up there. You know, yeah, it's like intercourse. You, you like to know if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Hey. So if you're doing something right, you know, we, we enjoy that. But um. I found that there was a definite difference in it sounding like somebody else and actually doing what you're meant to do. Mm -hmm. Because if you, there were meant to be 5,000 uh, Mo West or 10,000 K Marie's, then that's what he would have created. There's a reason why he created each artist the way that he created them. We need a smorgasbord. We don't need a whole bunch of the same people, right? Sure. So that's my little tidbit. I try to drop gems if I got them. <laughs> Hey, no, you're definitely doing <laughs> so that. So be you, do. the best version of you, and live your best life. Hey, that's the key there. All right, 
Now, shifting gears to more of a, an, and when I asked you to do this, I said uh, adulting topic. And I, <laughs> what I meant by that was time. So how do you manage to balance work and your personal life? Because... Honestly, at the moment, all of it's just my work and my personal life are one. Mm. <laughs> They're not even separate. Like, I am a um, stay-at-home mom on top of being the photographer and the spoken word. So I, where I find time, there's 24 hours in a day. And a lot of us spend that time sleeping, pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> Stay woke. But... <laughs> But you just gotta find time. Like sometimes I'm up when uh, my fella is asleep and when Sweet Pea is asleep, I'm up and I'm still editing pictures. Or I'm up and I'm writing poems. So I have to set this day aside. Okay, I'm leaving the house for five hours and I'm going to finish this poem. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do this and I'm going to finish this session. Like, and so it's, it's constantly a rotation and I have to put the puzzle pieces where they fit on that day. It's, but, I live for it because this is what I wanted. Exactly. This is what I asked for. So I'm. It's not a complaint. I'm just saying, it's all over the place. No. <laughs> Catch me when you can. That's right. That's right. <laughs> all right. No. I, and then uh, I definitely find myself doing that a lot too. A lot of times I'll wake up like four o'clock in the morning. Right. I was like, let me go put out this episode that way in the morning. Right. People can wake up and see this. Exactly. And then react to it. So I definitely respect that. Time management is right. huge. But I'm always open to suggestions and an admin to run the page. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's what took you so long right, to reply. Right, right, right. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm going to stop throwing shade. All right. So I'm going to skip one question because you really answered uh, that one earlier for me. So I'm going to move on to the long-term question. Okay. All right. So where do you or where would you like to see yourself in one year, three years, and in ten years? In one year, in one year for poetry, I would like to um, touch at least ten different states and grace mm. the stage somewhere and change some some lives. Go go there, get naked, <laughs> and change some lives in at least ten different states. For photography, I would like to be able to shoot in each state that I touch the mic in. <laughs> um, I wanna. I feel like you can never stop learning, so I'm always reading up and seeing how I can get better. Um, so I just want to be uh, the super version of what I am now in a year. In three years, I got to be super duper whooper. <laughs> it's whooper a word. I think I just made it, but it's yep. fine. I'll take it. <laughs> but um, I don't want to have an actual studio because I'm a traveling photographer. Mm -hmm. um, and my poetry, I feel like, can go. I'm a, I'm a creative as a whole. So I want to be being creative. So I also can make jewelry. I also can make uh, body butters and scrubs. And I know, don't look at me like that, man. There was a point in time where I made candles. Like, I just, wow. I don't have time at the moment. But in three years, I want to have time for all of that. I want to have time to use every creative outlet that I have. And then in 10 years, I want to have mastered them all. Mm. And I want to bring people, wherever I go, I want to bring somebody up with me. Like, I met a young lady at uh, Minding My Black Business, which was at Architecture. Um, if you've seen my hair, <laughs> you know that it was it was to my bra strap, and I cut my hair, and I colored it. Um, but the person that did that is the owner of Architecture. Her name is Tasha. Hit her up. But um, at the Minding My Black Business with <laughs> Tasha at Architecture, I met... Um, quite a few it was only for women and it was only for black women so i met quite a few people that are also in the business of bringing people up with them i met a young lady that's a photographer aspiring and she wants she saw my work and she's like no i want to work with uk and that was not only humbling but it's what i'm i'm put here to do like why would you there's enough room for all of us so why would you make it to the top and not take anybody to the top with true so did you, what happens to your legacy after you've made it? And not only will my daughter get it, but I want to instill it. And there's too many of us for us not to be instilling things in each other. Ooh. So with like that young lady, I can't wait to work with her. There's a young man that he's been a second shooter on my weddings. I, I can't wait to work with him again. He's 18 years old. His sister is 16. She's a makeup artist. She's doing hair. She's uh, doing music. Like there, these, you got to invest in our youth because this yeah. is the generation that's going to run the world. So I always feel like bringing people with you, that's the way to go. And so wherever I can do it, in me being a creative, <laughs> however I can do it, I'm there. 
So in 10 years, that's why I want to be mastering it and helping somebody else master it as well. You better bring them along. All right, all right. Investing in youth, that's, investing in the youth, excuse me, is yes. probably the best investment you can make ever. Ever. If you want to leave your mark, like you said. Right. Because your legacy lives forever after you, especially right. when you pass it on, because they'll do the same because someone did it for Exactly. You, so passes it exactly. On. You got to plant the seed in them so that mm -hmm. we, <laughs> we have beautiful growth. There you, you go. Know. Trees everywhere. Right. All right. So that brings me to my last question of the interview. Okay. And, uh, it's probably my most impactful and therefore my favorite. And I always dedicate it to everybody that's listening to the interview. So, what words would you have for someone who's just starting out on their own? And you know, before you take that leap of, leap of faith, you're always nervous. You know, you don't know if you should do it or not. Before they go all in for themselves, what words of encouragement would you have for them? If you don't believe in you, how can somebody else believe in you? When you said earlier, um, you gotta love yourself first. I firmly believe that. Because if you love yourself, you're gonna that you're not gonna conform. You're going to do exactly what it is that you want to do. You have to put you first sometimes. And when you put you first and you feel that nervousness, then you trust you enough to know that you can't give up and you can't quit because you got it. Because you know you, right? Right. Because if you love you, then you you, know you have to know you to love you. That's true. So that's that's the best gift that you can give to yourself. It's loving you so that you know that you're going to make it. That was a whole bunch of yous, but it's real. Hey. You I, know? I, hey. <laughs> you said that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you wow. <laughs> you flattered me. But um, never give up. There's always a way. Obstacles are, are they, they show you the obstacle courses, right? And they show you that even though you have to climb this wall, it's possible. And even though you have to uh, crawl under this, it's possible. And sometimes you don't have to crawl. Sometimes you can go around the outside and you can jump over, you can hopscotch over it. Uh, sometimes with the wall, you, there's a little hole underneath you can crawl under, you don't even have to go all that high. There's another way. So always find the way around the obstacle to get to where you're going. True. So that's another little, you know, I got I got little diamonds when I need them. Y'all can't see she me cross my leg. I she feel did. like y'all totally did. <laughs> she did. But hopefully that helps somebody. And hopefully that pushes somebody forward. I know this is not a one closed door, another one's gonna open. I know y'all hear that all the time, but no really. That's true. When one door closes, another one's gonna open. That just means it's not your way. Yep. You have to find another way. So right. believing in you, loving you, that's gonna get you there. Okay, Marie, that's, hey, every time you, you, you touch the mic, man, you're blessing another person. Oh, so, right. Whether you realize it or not. So, hey, now. now, like I said before, everybody wanted to know how they could see you, hear you more. Um, what's a great way they could get in contact with you? Okay, so on Facebook, it is Christina with a K. K Marie, K M A R I E, one word, no space, no hyphen, no period. Um, Marie is my last name. That, that I got a phone about that too. I dropped my last name, so my name is actually Christina Marie. Um, uh, my photography page on Facebook is www.facebook.com backslash K Marie Photography Fan. The fan is important, F A N. Otherwise, you're going to go to Kristen Marie, and it's not me. So, <laughs> um, on Instagram, I am K Marie Poetess, of course. As usual, K M A R I E, no space, no hyphen. You don't even gotta capitalize it. It's still, it's still gonna come to me. Um, I'm not gonna put my phone number on on the web, but nah, nah, y'all can reach me any of those other places. Do you need my email, poetkmarie at gmail dot com? Hey, uh, sounds good. Oh, and like the Black on Black Rhyme, step to the mic, mic check page, Black on Black Rhyme Mobile. And you can see the future shows. For instance, we have a show on November the 10th. The doors open at 7.30. It is a $10 cover, $7 for students. It is an architecture. The it's the C in architecture is an X play on words. Isn't she clever? But uh, <laughs> it is on Azalea and government. If you if y'all remember when Huggy Bear used to host the Purple Cafe. Yeah, I remember, get your mind right on Thursday nights. Well, it is on the side that faces Azalea. That place is no longer there. It's called Rice now, but y'all y'all should know where it is. All right. Hey, and if you have any questions, I'm sure if, she, if you email her, go on her page, I'm sure, or, you know, she'll be able to get in touch with you. Make sure you get there. Uh, I will be there as well. Yeah. Full effect, yeah, I'm, I'm in there. All right, swimwear. So, 
yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, definitely come out and support. Uh, Kay Marie, thank you again for joining us. I really appreciate you doing this interview for me. Thank I've been you. wanting thank to get this one for a while. Yes. Um, it's always a pleasure. Thank and, you, um, thank you. Yeah, that's it. We're going to cut it. Like I tell everybody, I usually start recording way before I tell somebody I'm recording, and mm -hmm. then I just in, in the middle of the conversation, I say, so like you recording right, right now? Yeah, basically. <laughs> oh, okay. So I just wanted to get. Well, that's good to know. Yeah, you know. That's, that's what's up. And, and I, I read through what you were later. trying to do. Yeah. You know. <laughs> so you got to get the natural talk because you know I, I knew I was talking at that point, so yeah, you got to get me regularly got, talking. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, it's it's mm -hmm. like a soft. One. I used to sound at the church. Ah. <laughs> Favorite church song of all time. Go. Uh, mm, what's that one that make you cry? Come with it. That make me cry. The one it just depends on what I'm going through at the time. Ooh. You know what I'm Financial saying? Financial struggle, go. Um, I don't know. I like that. Uh, I thirst for you. Mm, mm -hmm. Okay. You know the song. That's the yeah, one. Yeah. That's the that one. one. When you down, when you up, mm -hmm. when you that's, <laughs> sad, that, that's the one. I would have to say that one. For me, that dude, one. no matter what. Um, order my steps is going to get me every single time. Yeah, but I only want it if if it's sung. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I need that. Um, like I, I can only listen to it sometimes because I know I get emotional with it. Because mm. every single time I could be yeah. playing basketball or something, and I order my steps. I'm like, oh, I'm like, order oh them. Lord, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Let's just take a knee in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Time out, yes. our Father, which art in heaven. <laughs> yes, man. Come with us now. Yes. <laughs> You'll be there. To the throne of glory.